Hi, it's Sue. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do um, a project for the Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft Creative Team. So please come along and craft with me. What I'm doing is I'm going to do some ATCs. I love making ATCs. So my aim is to use the washi tape that I have here um, with the patterns on it. I've got the cats, the um, crazy cats. I've got my stencil pack. And I've got the Delusions uh, statements uh, sayings. So hopefully I'll be able to use those. Now I've also got... Um, the tangerine and Sedona paint from my uh, box of goodies that I got this month. Now I've also added the sky, the lime and white paint of Dina Wakeley's. And I've also got some, oh, total blank, um, watercolour paper. And I believe it was 180 uh, GSM. So it's it's fairly thick, but not overly thick. It's only a cheap one, this one. Um, and what I'm going to do, I've also got some foam brushes. So first of all, I'm basically going to just put some paint on the background. So, um, look, I'll probably speed this up, so I won't do too much talking. And I don't like these brushes, I've just decided. So I'm going to swap for... Let's see what have we got here. Try this one. Now because it is watercolour paper, it is harder to spread the paint around because it is quite uh, textured. You may want to add a little bit of water with your paint if you wish. I probably should have done that, but I don't have any water with me. One day I'll have a craft room that actually has water. That would be just wonderful. But for now, I'll have to just make do. Now, I'm just randomly putting it. Um, now, I didn't wash my brush. I figured it doesn't really matter. It's only the background. Part of the fun is just slapping on the paint with these, just making the background. Now I'm going to wash my brush because I'm changing to the the cooler colours. So um, if I add those straight away, it'll make mud. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to change, uh, wash my brush, and I'll be right back. Okay. Now what I've done is I've just put some paper behind so I don't make too much of a mess on my craft mat. Now what I'm going to do is add the lime and the sky and possibly the white. Um, now I think that's dry enough, yep. Let's see how we go with this one. Hopefully these colours will look okay together. Interesting. I don't mind it, actually. Sometimes you've got to try things that are a little bit different. That's better. Add a bit of water, I think. It looks better. Spreading a lot easier. Okay, just going over the sides a little bit there. Just sort of spreading the colours out. Um, so if I put the blue there, there and there. Like just a little bit more green, I think. So there's not so much blue in the one area. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, uh, the sky now. Just add that as well. And I'll just basically fill in the spaces now. You'll see I've tried to keep uh, the colours sort of, um, not sure how to say it, um, 
sort of away from each other I guess so that they're they're a little bit mingled and I've tried to sort of try to keep the same amount of color if that makes any sense so the, the one color is not more um, noticeable I guess than another trying to make sure there's no white space left either all right I'll let that dry and I'll be right back. All right, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I like the way the colors have sort of, um, I don't know, they look good together. Now, uh, let me see, I'm going to do some stenciling. It's funny, when I first started doing this sort of mixed media -y art journaling stuff, um, it took me quite a while to, I guess, add the layers. Um, and even now I still, I still struggle with the covering up um, of the different layers. Um, it, it's just something that I find, I don't know, hard to do. Um, you know, you look and you go, yeah, I love that. And then you go, but I'm going to add another layer. And I have to talk myself into the fact that no, adding the layer will make it look better. So it's, it's taken a while. All right, now I've got these three stencils. So um, I think random selection. These are great, these little stencils, I must admit. Now I'm going to use the same colours and just add some more sort of texture to it. So a little bit of the tangerine and just a normal makeup sponge. And I probably haven't got enough of the tangerine. <clears throat> okay, and what I do is I start with where the colour is and move off the colour. So I'm starting with the orange area and then moving on to the green. So just lightly stamping. Just pretty random really. So you get that sort of a look. You can see that from there I think, yes. And we might do some here. Alright, I am going to dry in between each layer so that I don't uh, mess it up. But that's sort of what it's looking like. Try to vo avoid the straight lines if you can too. I'll just, um, I don't know, use something over that. So that's that one. And we'll let that dry. And I'll go and put this in some water. I'll be right back. Alright, uh, the Sedona this time. And I'm using this little uh, stencil. So same deal. Spread some paint out, put a bit more this time. Um, pick a sponge. Oh wow, look at that one. Cool, very nice. A little bit here. All right, okay, looking interesting. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. Okay, I do have the green or the lime paint and the last stencil of that set and another sponge. And I didn't clean that bit up, I don't want that there. All right, and again, starting with the green areas and moving off the green areas. Wow, I love that one. Look how cool that is. It doesn't matter if it overlaps another one either. That's all good. All right, let that one dry. All right, so now I've got the uh, sky color paint and I'm going to use this other Tim Holtz stencil I have. Um, it's I don't think it has a name, but it's got crosses. Just layering one, and it's got the crosses. I'm sure there's a name somewhere, but anyway. I love this one. Very useful, this one. Alright, so, blue. And I'm just, um, I'll just go back out a little bit. I'm just dabbing the paint um, on the side here. Now I'll just go back in again so that you can see a little better. All right, just rearrange myself. There we go. Okay. Ooh, 
hard to find areas to do now. Um, I'll just leave it at that actually. I don't want to put too much. Might actually do a little here maybe. Just because I can let that dry. Alright, now there are some areas that don't have anything. So what I'm going to do with the white paint, and this will brighten it a little bit too. I'm going to use this Dilutions stencil. Um, and just fill in or go over some of those areas so that it um, so it looks like every area has had a little bit. And this should brighten it up a little bit too. I think that will do. So I'll just let this one dry and be back. Okay. Now, I've also got out, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them actually, but it's this stamp here um, with some little cat paw prints. This is just a cheap um, stamp set that I, I don't know, got it from somewhere. It's not the greatest stamp set, I must say, but um, hopefully the little paw prints will work. And I'm going to do them, I think, in black, so just my stays on ink. And again, just sort of random, not too dark, first, second generation. Alright, now I'm going to also use the, um, there's a little stamp in this particular set with the fish. So I'm going to use that. Um, and I think I might try this Dilutions uh, green ink stamp stamp pad. Oh yeah, that looks kind of cool. Little uh, fish skeleton. The idea is to get. Um, like a mixture of things all over the page because when you cut them up to make ATCs or artist trading cards um, you need a little bit of something on all of them and for those who haven't heard of artist trading cards basically it's a small two inch by three inch uh, yeah two and a half inch by three and a half inch card that um, you trade with someone else. It's a little piece of your art and you trade it with someone else. Or you can just give them away. It's up to you. Alright, so um, I think I'm happy with that. Alright, so now um, just thinking what else I can add. Uh, there is a milk bottle and there is the wool but I don't think I'll use those. I think I might just do some script now. Um, actually, I won't put it on there. And I think I will use the blue Dilutions um, ink as well. This is London Blue. That green one actually was cut grass. So, this one well, might help if I put it on the actual right side of the stamp. Clever. Oh dear. Now, that my challenge is always getting it up the right way. That way. And I'm just... I just want a little bit. I don't want the whole lot. But anywhere that sort of looks a bit empty or blank, basically. Okay, the next job now is to cut them up. And I'm just going to use a blade and ruler. Uh, you can, of course, use your cutting thingamajiggy, whatever they're called. I can't remember. Um, I'm... I don't know, I prefer to cut them with the blade. Alright, so, uh, two and a half by three and a half inches. So, I'm just going to line them up on this cutting mat, which is the only one I've got actually that has inches, because obviously being in Australia, we talk in centimetres. <laughs> uh, so, two and a half. Now, I'm just thinking if I just make straight down there, will that make two? One, two, three and a half, yes, and I'll have a little bit extra. Doesn't matter, I can use it for something. 
All right, so two and a half. All right, I'll just cut these up and I will be back. All right, I have cut them all up. Now, when I was making it, I did actually make a second sheet exactly the same, well, using the same things as the first one. So same colour scheme, same stamps, same stencils, etc. So now I've ended up with, I think there were nine for each sheet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, both had nine. Interestingly enough, I actually cut them differently, but still got nine. So interesting. Um, and of course I have some scraps here, which can be used for making a master board or I have previously in another video on um, when I made some Halloween Halloween um, ATCs I actually sewed them together um, and they looked really quite cool okay so they're all cut out ready now they are still quite thin so it is uh, a good idea to back them with cardboard now if you use a black cardboard or a cardstock you can actually make these a little smaller and have a black um, outline if you like you could do it this way and use um, a sharpie something like that to make a black border it's entirely up to you so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have some white cardstock and I'm going to stamp off some of these stamps. Now just looking at them, um, I'm not sure how many will actually fit on. So that's, will just fit uh, that one, not quite. So what I'm thinking, I might actually do, um, may actually end up using like a half an image because some of these are quite large, but something like that. But I will stamp them onto white cardstock first, I think, and I'll see how that looks. So I'll find some cardstock and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I've got out my stamp platform. Now, the, I've got the Tim Holtz stamp platform. Um, and we, I don't know, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Sometimes I have success, sometimes I don't. I don't know why. It, I don't know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. Sometimes I find the magnets don't hold the paper. Um, just little things. So anyway, I'm going to give it a go. I've got a second piece of paper or cardstock just in case I have to do them, um, you know, manually. Now, I did also grab out the Echo Park paper um, because I thought, you know, you can get cats in different colours. And I thought maybe it might be nice to have the cats in these colours. So I'll have a look as well. We'll give it a try. Um, okay, so stays on ink because I like stays on ink. And let's see how we go. Oops. And the mess on my desk is accumulating dramatically. Now these are brand new stamps, so they may require a little bit of effort. Okay, not too bad at all. Yay. Right, just a little bit more, darken it up a bit. Doesn't seem to be sitting flat, I don't know why. Okay. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. And I might actually make a second one. Now, what I do need to do... All right, I might um, stop the camera there and stamp off some more because I think it's going to get a little boring watching me do this. All right, I've actually stamped off a couple more than I needed. So I've got the white ones and some on the yellow and some on the gray, uh, grayish color. And now I'm going to fussy cut them all out. So I'll be back. <laughs> All right, I've cut some of them out, not all of them, because it's going to take me quite some time. I might be um, in front of the television job, I think. So I've just got an assortment here, and what I've done is I've put them on the backgrounds that I kind of think suits them the most. Uh, the white ones I've sort of put where there's more white, um, and the darker one on a sort of the lighter background, and this one um, I just thought it looked good there. Now, they don't totally fit. So my thinking is to glue them so that they're partially on. 
like so. So that little tail bit will probably get cut off. But I don't think that's a problem. Um, you know, it just adds to it. See, this one you can even go as far as doing that. But I probably won't. I'll probably put it like that. Um, so, <clears throat> like so. Um, like that. You know, it works. Um, I'm going to use my art glitter glue, which I've just noticed is very low now. So I might have to get some more because I do like it. It does work quite well. Uh, when it's not blocked, obviously. Okay, we'll be back when we've unblocked it. Okay, take two, hopefully. Yep. One day I'll, I do actually have one of those little tip thingies, but um, yeah, I haven't popped it on. Alright, now I probably didn't need to do the tail, did I? Never mind. I can always wipe it off. Um, let him dry. And we'll glue another one down. Now this was the um, Echo Park. Oh, what's it called? Echo Park. <laughs> Coordinating Solids Paperback. And it's actually not too bad in terms of thickness either. Oops, way too much there. I really like the quirkiness of these cats. Yeah, little expressions on their faces. It's quite cute. You know, sort of a quirky way. Alright. Now I'll just cut that extra off there. And a little bit there. Okay. <clears throat> Now, because I don't have a border, what I'm going to do, I've just got, this is a chisel um, edge sharpie, and I'm just running it down the side like so. Oh, which reminds me, I do need, to, oh dear, that was not good. Unfortunately, sharpies are very difficult to uh, wipe off. Mm, okay. Never mind, we will fix it. But what I did remember as I was doing that is I need to back them. So I'm going to glue them onto some card and cut them out. And I will be back in a moment. Alright, just very quickly. <clears throat> I've stuck it onto the cardboard and I'm just trimming the cardboard um, edges away now, the extra bits. I find it easier to do it this way rather than sit there and cut the cardboard to the size of the card and you can see it's just um, just random cardboard there's different colored backs to it um, yeah you really just need one that's got sort of a plain back uh, this one here the purple I didn't think would suit those so I didn't use that I could have glued on that side and that would be the back but I didn't really like the purple so that's why I didn't use that one. So that's all I do. I just trim them off with the blade. Um, you could, I guess, do it with scissors. Well, you could do it with scissors. You could do it with your cutter. If you're, um, you know, really good with a cutter. <laughs> I just prefer the blade myself. All right. Now I was going to do this. And hopefully have more success than I did on the last one. Now, of course, if you find that it's not glued on the corners or anything, you can always add the extra glue. Sorry, didn't realise I was off camera there. Unfortunately, it's one of those things I need to be able to see. <laughs> I find cereal boxes are, are good ones too. We don't tend to have a lot of cereal in this house, so it's not always easy to have a cereal box. Yeah. <clears throat> you can, of course, do an extra border around if you like. Um, I was thinking... Ooh. Sorry about that. Um, that was my... 
heat gun and I actually have a foot control under my desk and I must have accidentally hit the foot control. Oh, talk about give yourself a heart attack. Um, okay, so I'm thinking I might just do like scribbly sort of a, a dashy sort of a scribbly line because that sort of goes with the, um, the feel of the stamp. I'll just, I'll just do one and I'll show you what I mean. So that's what I've done, just like that. And you could add some little dashes and so forth if you like. Something like that. Okay, so once you've done that, um, and I'll do the others in a moment, I have actually stamped off a lot of the sentiments. Now they're a little big, I have a feeling, so I'm going to have to pick the ones that will fit. Um, I think this one may. Poor scissors are so glued up at the moment. Those things that I just, I don't know, <laughs> I forget to do. It's only when I use them that I realise and then I think, oh, I'll do that when I finish and, well, I forget. Or, you know, you think, oh my gosh, look at the time I needed to have packed up 10 minutes ago. So you quickly pack up and there goes another opportunity. And I am going to just go around the edges. As I was stamping the sentiments off, I was having a good chuckle to myself because they are, uh, to me, they're just <laughs> so funny. I can, there are situations that I can just see myself using them. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that one suits this one. So, in my um, experience, might have to go across his body. I am right. So, we might just. Move it down a little bit. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, I think that works quite well. So that's what that will be. So I'll just glue that down. Oh, and I didn't pop the lid on. <laughs> now what I might do... Um, I might finish these off and come back and show you these ones. The rest of them I think I'll finish and then just put some photos at the end of the video. Now please um, pop over to the blog as well because there will be some photos of each step um, on the blog with some instructions. And of course the other ladies um, things will be there too, those who don't have YouTube channels and so forth. Um, so it is worth popping over to have a look at the blog. And what I was thinking, anyone who um, makes some ATCs, they don't have to be exactly the same as mine obviously, they can be um, just ATCs. Pop a picture on the Auntie Vera Facebook page which the link will be in the description box because um, we, we all would really love to see what other people are doing um, you know and they don't have to be what you would consider brilliant works of art we, you know we all make mistakes not everything turns out how we want them to so you know, but it is really nice to see what other people are doing, especially if you're getting inspiration. I mean, the whole point of us creating things as the creative team is to inspire other people to create as well, because um, you know, it's it's a great thing to do. Share share the ideas, share the you know your information, your knowledge, and so forth. So please put some pictures up onto Facebook. It doesn't have to be anything glamorous; just a picture. You know with a quick little comment um, and what I am thinking if you are interested in having one of these little ATCs you can send me an email and my email address is always in the contact details in the description box so send me a little um, send me an email just a quick email with your address and I'm happy to pop one in the post for you it um, international or um, within Australia it's fine I have no problem with that um, 
but yeah that would be great and you know if you want to send me one go for it but you don't have to um, I'm just happy to send these out I don't need 18 of them to be completely honest so if you'd like one please contact me um, and as I said I will continue making these and pop the photos on the end of the video one thing I didn't say is when you do do an ATC it's nice to have a little sheet on the back now mine are pretty boring it says this ATC was created by Sue Artcraft and Journals and the date and the made by and usually I'll just give a quick description of how I did it so in this case it was a, a paint um, probably masterboard um, and stamp the dilution stamp or some or Tim Holt stamp something like that all right thank you very much for watching um, and as I said please go and see the blog as well please keep an eye out for the other creative teams um, projects and the rest of my projects as well and as I said the items I've used and the other ladies use will be on sale at the Auntie Vera scrap and craft online uh, website so i think i've covered everything um yeah all right uh thank you again for watching and i will see you next time bye for now